three out of six Chinese participants got trolled, five out of six Korean participants failed to solve this problem although they had a higher solve rate on problem three. And it was dubbed the most troll problem in IMO history in AOPS. A bunch of memes generated on Discord and some people who took part in the IMO even arranged a bunch of sticks to form a snail with the text 3 and lock 2 on it. What is this problem and why has it garnered so much attention and controversy? Well, this episode talks about a certain problem that looks simple, has a simple looking solution, but has managed to bait so many people into overthinking and there is actually a lesson to be learned from this problem. We are talking about IMO 2024 problem 5 known as the snail problem. This is the problem statement. Turbo the snail plays a game on a board with 2024 rows and 2023 columns. There are hidden monsters in 2022 of the cells. Initially, Turbo does not know where any of the monsters are, but he knows that there is exactly one monster in each row except the first row and the last row. So all the middle rows have one monster, and that each column contains at most one monster. Turbo makes a series of attempts to go from the first to the last row. On each attempt, he chooses to start on any cell in the first row, then repeatedly move to an adjacent cell sharing a common side. If he reaches a cell with a monster, his attempt ends, and he's transported back to the first row to start a new attempt. The monsters do not move, and Turbo remembers whether or not each cell he has visited contains a monster, so he remembers the safe squares. If he reaches any cell, in the last row, his attempt ends and the game is over. Determine the minimum value of n for which Turbo has a strategy that guarantees reaching the last row on the nth attempt or earlier, regardless of the locations of the monsters. Just for the sake of intuition, I actually rotated the board over by 90 degrees counterclockwise so that you go from left to right instead, because like it feels more intuitive to go from left to right. But that's just a small detail. So here we have a 12 times 13 board. I'm just going to work with a smaller case for now. And what happens is that we can place a snail here or here and we can move it to a square adjacent to the previous square. But this also means that we can move it to any square adjacent to a square that has already been visited because it forms a connected path, right? So, this is what I want to do here. I want, it to, I want to turn it into a two-player game of perfect information. What I mean by this is that Turbo doesn't have to... How do I say this? Turbo doesn't have to guess where the monsters are because the monsters were not put there beforehand. I would like to reimagine it as there's a snail here, right? And there's... A monster boss something like this and the monster boss actually decides where to put the monsters because as far as he puts a monster on a square that doesn't have any neighboring monsters in the same cell wait not same cell same row or column he will create a valid configuration where there are enough columns and rows left to put all the other monsters in so now the game is rephrased as the snail starts on a certain cell and <clears throat> when he moves to an adjacent cell, he knows that this cell is safe, right? And when he moves and moves until he hits a monster, wait, I should recolor this. When he moves until he reaches a monster, now he knows that all of these are safe as well right because there's exactly one monster in each row or column and the monster boss he cannot put another monster here or here but he can put it anywhere else like if the snail starts here he can just spawn kill the snail here it's, it still works so what happens is that the snail has to restart again but with this knowledge in mind. And his goal is to form a connecting path from the start to the end with safe squares. So right now there is something that we can observe here. 
we can observe that he is very very close to creating a connected path already and so if he comes here again and this one he goes here and he gets hit with a monster now he knows that wait imagine that the monster boss puts a monster here so now these ones are safe right Now the snail only has to reach one of these squares. Like he he has to reach this or this. Right? But what happens is that when you look from the monster boss's perspective, you can just block out the diagonals. Like when he puts it here, this square is still unsafe. And so he can just block out the entire diagonal except for one case. You cannot use the diagonal strategy when Turbo is inquiring about where the monster on the first row, wait, not the first row, on the second row is. So, say the monster is here, so say the monster boss puts the monster here. He's essentially making all of these squares safe. And what happens is that usually you have to safeguard 4 squares, right? But now he has only 2 squares to safeguard and he cannot safeguard both of them. So if the snail goes here, <coughs> I apologize for that. If the snail comes here, you block this one, this is a path, right? This helps the snail win in 3 moves. So if the monster does this, this is also a bad move because this is now saved and this entire path opens. So the monster is essentially forced to put <coughs> the monster here. He's essentially forced to put it on the rim. And so when Turbo dies to this one, it reveals that these ones are safe, right? And so what happens is that he can troll with the diagonal, right? He can just do the diagonal thing like this and Turbo can never go behind and go to the end. But there is one resource that we have not used here. There's another way of knowing which squares are safe which is by simply walking into it. We do not have to rely on dying to monsters to know which squares are safe. So. <clears throat> if Turbo tests for this square and he knows that there's a monster, well, he I mean, he can just test the entire row. And if this one has a monster, he can predict that these ones are probably monsters and walk down this path. Right? Now, you might be thinking, wait, doesn't that die in the middle where, like, you cannot walk here either. A lot of people die to this trap, alright? They think... Also, this this is 13 times 14, I'm sorry, I messed up at the start, but that's a small detail. The thing is, like, some people thought there are shenanigans in here. Because you can't really guarantee which side the monster will be on, right? I mean, the optimal strategy for the monster boss here seems to be to put things in the, in a diagonal. And a lot of people here will try to induct and reduce the board to <coughs> have, the, uh, have the original size, right? Like, if there's a monster here, then they consider this board instead and do this a log 2 thing. And they thought the answer to this would be like log 2 of 2023. But they did not observe the resource that we just talked about. If Turbo walks in this path and he doesn't die, then all of them are safe squares. And so if there is indeed a monster here, like this one is confirmed. Wait, I, I should put the monsters that are unconfirmed in orange instead. So it's clear which ones are speculation. 
and which ones are confirmed. <coughs> now the thing here is that any vertical move downwards that the snail makes, it's essentially immune because it will be a huge blunder for the monster boss to attack the snail when he's moving down. Say he's moving down like this and the monster boss puts a monster here. What happens is that the snail wins instantly. The snail just wins on the spot with this continuation, right? Remember that this is a safe lane and the monster boss has to do everything to prevent the snail from reaching the safe lane. But there's also another catch. The catch is that if the monster boss puts something here, like while he's moving forward, the monster boss puts down a monster, like in this case, say he dies here. These squares are safe anyways, so what happens is that he has access to the safe lane and he wins. And if the monster boss doesn't put anything in his path, he still wins, right? So the actual answer to this problem is even less than Lock 2 or 2022. It's 3. It's 3 because if the snail detects a monster in the middle of the row for row 2, he can win in 3 moves as we have discussed. And if he finds a monster on the rim on the second row, he can walk down the staircase. But he can also be prevented from winning in 2 moves. How do you do that? Well, you snipe him on the first time, on his first move, right? As soon as he steps out of the save column, you just... Wait. Alright. As soon as he moves out, you can spawn kill him. And the path that you get is not enough to create A connecting path from the start to the end. Like you cannot avoid going into one of these two areas and as soon as the snail goes into one of these two areas you can just spawn kill him again like instantly kill him as soon as he enters. So the monster boss right here has a way to prevent the snail from winning in two moves but as hard as he tries the snail can just walk down the staircase and win within attempt 3. That's the end of the problem. Now there are several things that we can learn from this problem. There are actually three lessons, two of them are mathematical and one of them is psychological. The mathematical takeaway here is that we should turn any kind of game like this into a two player game with perfect information. Do not leave any room for guesses. And the second one is, in order to find good moves, try to rule out the bad moves first. Now the psychological takeaway is that a lot of people that I know solved this problem at home because they did not take the contest, but the experience of trying this problem in contest is absolutely different because it was placed as problem 5, right? And problem 3 on the previous day was absolutely brutal. So a lot of people overthought and failed this problem. Like 5 Korean students failed this problem although they are a top country and 3 of them solved question 3. So. The real thing is that they were intimidated by this problem and thought that since it's a problem 5, it should be a lock 2 answer, right? But what we should instead do is that we should ignore the problem placement entirely and face the problem for what it actually is. For example, IMO 2022 problem 3, right? It has the difficulty of a P3, but it has the complexity of like a P2. And there are also problems that are harder than the placement suggests. And there are troll problems like this one that has the complexity of a P1 but it's just tricky, right? And that's what I want you guys to take away from this problem. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next episode.